What's up, everyone? Tailwind CSS is the new hotness in front-end design, and I love it also. Uh, so I've used it in Next.js, I've used it in React, I've used it in a lot of different places, but I've never used it with just vanilla JavaScript. So I figured I'd create a video to show you how I set it up myself in just a few minutes. If you are new to the channel, first of all, welcome. Thanks for checking out the video. My name is James Quick and I do weekly and two to three times a week videos on web development related topics. So if you're interested in that, make sure to stick around for the video and the channel. I do wanna share one thing that I am uh, starting a podcast with my friend Amy Dutton called Compressed FM. And we are launching by the time this video is out a few weeks in the future. By the time you watch this video, maybe it's already launched. So if you're interested in weekly podcasts about web development and web design topics, uh, make sure to check us out at compressed.fm. There'll be a link in the description below. All right, Tailwind CSS, vanilla JavaScript, let's go. All right, so as we get started here, I've got uh, an article that I found on Medium from Sebastian Eschweiler, uh, Tailwind CSS for Absolute Beginners. And this is uh, kind of the basic steps that I followed here, but uh, just wanted to have that for reference. I'll have a link to that in the description below so you can follow it as well. So I am in a brand new folder inside of VS Code. And the first thing we need to do is just do an npm init dash y. This will initialize this thing as a JavaScript project. And the dash y will basically say, hey, go ahead and do all the default values, uh, including taking uh, the name of the project from the name of the folder that I'm in. And what this does is it creates this package.json file, which has general metadata about our application. And we're going to install in dependencies here in a second that will be listed inside of the dependency section in the package.json. Now, the next thing we want to do is do the actual npm install of Tailwind CSS. So we want to install that package. All right, so it looks like that is done installing. And uh, since that's finished, what we want is to create a, a new folder uh, called CSS. And then in there, we're going to create a style z.css. And what we're going to do in here is basically define what components of Tailwind we want to include in our uh, final CSS. So we'll do some annotations for Tailwind base, for Tailwind components, and for Tailwind utilities. Hopefully I get all those spelled correctly. So this source CSS file is now going to uh, define that it's going to need reference to all those different uh, aspects of Tailwind. From here, we can do uh, mpx tailwind CSS uh, init. And what this will do in theory is it will let us uh, go ahead and create the configuration file for tailwind CSS, but uh, it's saying that we're missing a package that we need to have. And this is slightly different than what you found in those instructions. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and install, we'll need auto prefixer, we'll need post CSS CLI, and then I'm going to install something called watch that we'll cover here in a second. So I'm going to install all those packages. Uh, once we get the auto prefixer installed, we should be able to then run our npx tailwind init command again. So if we try that again, this should create our base tailwind config file. And this is all the stuff that we need by default. Now, one thing we'll come back to here is the uh, is this purge here in a minute. Now, the last configuration file we'll need in here will be a post css.config.js file. And we'll paste in uh, basically just requiring these plugins for Tailwind CSS and for Auto Prefixer. Requiring Tailwind CSS here, we'll pick up on those annotations that we put inside of styles. Auto Prefixer will do some prefixes for our styles as it gets converted. All right, now the next thing we need to do is actually define inside of our package.json a script for building. And what this command will do, this will run post CSS. It will, uh, you specify which file you're looking to compile. So this is the styles file inside of the CSS folder. So that's this file here that we've already looked at. And then this is saying the output directory will be build.css. So when we save this, this will do, if we do npm run build, this will uh, look at this origin styles.css. It will use tailwind, it will use auto prefixer. And then it will create the output inside of a build directory here. And you'll see this is going to be a big, long, huge file. And I think this is basically all of the Tailwind CSS code. We'll talk about purging here in a second. But with that in place, that means that we can uh, create inside of our build directory, maybe. We can create our index.html. And uh, the bang character in here will give you uh, access to boilerplate HTML file. Give this the title of Tailwind Vanilla 
JS. And then I'll also add an H1 for Tailwind Vanilla JS. So this is just a, a simple HTML file here. And what we want to do is link to uh, that CSS file, the output CSS file. So inside of the same directory, we want to link to styles.css. So one trick that we can do, I've got an extension called the live server extension installed. I've got a video on that uh, that you can check out if you want to, uh, but I'm going to open the command palette and I'm going to start the live open with live server. What this will do is it will uh, kind of give us a live server as you would probably expect that will auto reload as we save. So if I say updated, save now this thing has been updated up here let me zoom in a bit for this to be a little easier to see all right so just to check that these uh, tailwind styles are ready uh, let's do a class and we'll just say uh, text for xl this should make this text much much bigger there you go and you could do text red 400 I have to make sure i get these right so there's our 400 color of red and if we wanted to make that darker you could go up to a 900 and have a really dark red there so tailwind css is working right now the only issue that we have is that this is copying over uh, basically all of the tailwind styles into here which is not what we want if you look at how big this file is this is um a hundred thousand two hundred thousand almost two hundred thousand lines of code that's a lot of code so we want to we want to kind of uh, minimize that so inside of our tailwind config file we can update our purge and instead of just being a an empty array we can have it be an object or we can say enabled is true and then we tell it uh, what content we want to look for uh, and basically what this does is it looks for any reference to class names inside of the files that we specify here so any class names that aren't found in our source files Tailwind will not include those classes inside inside of the output styles.css. So you'll see, remember that thing was like 200,000 lines of code uh, a second ago. We'll see what this looks like in a second. So let's do a slash build. We want to say, hey, anything inside of the build directory and then basically anything inside of that that ends in .html. That's where we want to look for references to class names from Tailwind. So when we do this, we save that file. We then run an npm run uh, build again. This will now do an optimized build. And if we look at the styles.css when it's finished, uh, it's still gonna be a decently big file, but it's now 625 lines of code instead of 200,000 lines of code. And if we uh, look in here, there should be the text red is in here at text 900, but you don't see any other text colors. But if we were to, for example, if we were to search text red 500, uh, that class is not in here. But if we then updated our HTML, save that and then ran another build you'll see that the text red 900 is not there anymore but the text red 500 is because it found a reference to that thing inside of here so here's that text red 500. now the one thing that is not so optimal about this is uh, we have to run a build anytime we change our class name so there's kind of two different things that you could do you could uh, conditionally uh, check this path or you could conditionally conditionally enable this thing to be true based on some sort of node environment variable so let's do a console log of process dot env dot dot node in v let's look let's see what this looks like here and this will run in our npm run build so we should see uh, that this is in development right now this string is in development versus production so we could check to see uh, this enabled button. We could uh, change this whether or not we're in production or development. So what we could do is uh, have a variable called purge and then say this is going to be process.env.nodeenv and we'll do a ternary here. So if that thing uh, equals production, we will say that purge will be true. Otherwise, this thing will be false. So that enables us now to uh, include this purge here and say, hey, we only want to purge when we're going to production. So that will allow when we do a build locally, it will grab all the CSS so we don't have to recompile it every time. And then when we deploy to production, it will then do the minimize build when we deploy it. So let's do an uh, npm run build again. This should actually go back to that really big file versus the small one that we just saw. So if we open this style CSS up, uh, we see now we get our really, really big file in here. In production, it will be back to that small one. Now, I mentioned we installed the watch command earlier, and that was an idea uh, that I had where we could define a watch script, and this thing will uh, watch 
and it will run uh, this command. So oh, let's actually put this inside of quotes. So it will run that watch command. It will uh, run the npm run build and command anytime it sees a change inside of slash disk. So that's what that watch command will do. It will continue to build that stuff anytime we change uh, something in our disk. So if we were to change something inside of the index HTML file, then it would go and rerun uh, the build. Now, the problem with that is it's looking for changes inside of the build. And if the index HTML file is changing, which triggers a rebuild, which changes the styles.css, it's now going to uh, do a continuous rebuild as well. So we had I had that watch command set up, but opted to go for uh, this option here where I had the purge variable and then determine whether or not to actually enable that purge based on it being in development or production. All right, so that is how you set up Tailwind CSS inside of a vanilla JavaScript project. If you'd like to see more Tailwind CSS on this channel and demos and tutorials and stuff like that, let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel so you can check out more content in the future, and I'll see you next time.